toy weapons have been around for as long as there have been children. Even in ancient times, children played with toy swords and toy bows and arrows, whether those were carefully made or like is still done today, just an appropriately shaped stick. And as long as there have been guns, there have been toy guns. And since the 19th century, the types and models of those have, well, proliferated. And while they've represented a whole lot of fun and play, they also represent unique challenges for children, for parents, and for law enforcement. It is history that deserves to be remembered. Historically, children have nearly always played with toy weapons. Recent excavations in Roman barracks from around 120 AD discovered a toy sword, carefully carved and constructed for children. They would also play with toy bows and arrows, and going back far enough, at ladles and even spear throwers, such as the ones found in a shell midden, essentially an ancient dump, that seemed to have been designed to fit in children's hands. These toys did serve a practical purpose aside from play, and taught skills that children would need as adults. It's difficult to pinpoint when the first toy gun was made in the 13th century, the hand cannon was invented in China, a successor to the fire lance. The weapon spread throughout Eurasia in the next century, and in the 14th and 15th century became common throughout Europe. Among the earliest toy guns we have found are 16th and 17th century petronels. These were cast lead, iron, or bronze miniature weapons, and often had barrels bored and included a ramrod. They were called petronels because they were often made to look like actual petronels, a gun carried by light cavalry of the period. They were generally only a few inches in length and likely could have been fired, so they had both a barrel and a touch hole, although doing so would have been quite dangerous. Children also could play with cast or wooden cannons in the same period. In many ways, however, the toy gun as we know it is a more modern invention. Newspapers in the early 19th century make repeated references to toy guns. An early one from Jackson's Oxford Journal mentioning a little one presenting a toy gun. In the 1820s, the percussion cap was invented, a kind of ignition device for muzzle-loaded weapons that allowed them to fire reliably in any weather. Percussion caps are small copper caps filled with mercury fulminate, which was manually loaded. The gun's hammer smashed and ignited the fulminate, which lit the main charge. The musket still needed to have powder and a ball loaded, and a new cap would need to be placed for each shot. Toy guns quickly mimed the concept. An 1836 ad in the Alexandria Gazette of Virginia includes toy percussion guns and percussion caps. Uh, the cap itself provided the pop. These toys were generally meant to look like real weapons. An article in an 1820 edition of the Leeds Mercury records that someone reported hundreds of firearms being collected in a house in York. Authorities were sent to seize the weapons only to find 200 toy guns, bought two years since. The toys were also not especially safe. A letter to the editor in the 1862 edition of the Bath Weekly Chronicle and Herald reports two instances of accidents with cap guns. In one instance, a child was struck in the eye by a fragment of the cap with such violence as to cause complete destruction of the organ. The writer attributed the cause to smooth, cheap caps. Another letter from a surgeon to a London hospital sought to draw attention to the terrible effects of cheap and bad percussion caps in toy guns and the many eyes lost every year to them. As the demand for guns and percussion caps dropped after the Civil War, several gun companies turned to making toy guns as part of an effort to stay in business. Other early toy guns were called firecracker guns and had no moving parts at all. Instead, a firecracker would be inserted into the barrel and the firecracker's own explosion could propel a pellet forward. From the beginning, those toys had the potential to be mistaken for real weapons. The lines were blurred even in law. An 1883 Ohio statute defines toy guns as pistols manufactured from any metallic or hard substance. A Pennsylvania statute from the same year defines toy or imitation guns as arranged as to be capable of being loaded with gunpowder or other explosive substance, cartridges, shot, slugs, or balls, and being exploded, fired off, and discharged. And of course, both definitions seem to cover real weapons as much as toy ones. In 1875, one father took another to court over his son losing an eye, and the New York Times lamented fathers who are already indifferent to the welfare of their children and mothers who don't have the heart to deprive their boys of their toys for more than a week at a time. The judge dismissed the case. Another report from Baltimore reported two boys who had been injured in the hand by toy pistols who had then developed lockjaw. In a 1915 book about gunshot injuries, a whole section is dedicated to toy guns and toy gun tetanus, which the author estimates killed 160 people annually. Ohio, Kansas, New Hampshire, Iowa, Pennsylvania, Washington, New Jersey, and Virginia all passed laws limiting the sale or possession of toy guns to minors. Maine, Wisconsin, Utah, Indiana, and Arkansas went a step further. 
making it illegal for anyone, minor or adult, to sell or use toy firearms. A toy gun was one of the Milton Bradley Company's most popular early toys. Founded in 1860, in 1884 they designed a wooden toy gun inspired by the popular Buffalo Bill's Wild West show, which could fire wooden pellets. And the gun was so successful and demand so great that the company couldn't keep up. They expanded their production spaces and still struggled to keep up, but the expansion also allowed the company to produce products that simply wouldn't have been possible before the expansion. In 1886, the Markham Air Rifle Company introduced the first BB gun, a wood and steel gun called the Chicago. The wooden spring piston air rifle design was not made as a toy, but as a youth training rifle and used birdshot pellets that we now know as BBs. While not strictly a toy, the guns are often associated with children and not as dangerous or deadly as firearms. In 1888, Clarence Hamilton invented an all-metal air rifle, which became the first of the wildly popular Daisy brand BB guns. In A Christmas Story, it was a Daisy Red Rider that Ralphie Parker wanted for Christmas. You'll shoot your eye out, kid! According to Newsweek, about 4.5 out of every 100,000 children yearly suffer non-powder gun-related eye injury. Interestingly, the Daisy Red Rider model of BB gun is still in production, while the Red Rider film serials, after which it was based, haven't been produced since 1950. The humble toy pop gun, which uses air pressure to fire a tethered or untethered projectile, either using a spring or piston action, were many young boys' first toy guns, but it's unknown when and how they were invented. In 1876, Carl Beer filed a patent for an improvement in toy pop guns. It's pop gun powered by a hollow cylinder that is dumped along a handle and pops out a rock. It fits the description much better, but the only claims to the patent were the addition of a whistle. An 1868 patent was granted to Charles Kirchhoff for a blast gun, which used a pump to burst a seal and launch pellets, mostly meant to produce the sound and propelling practice of firearms. He mentions pop guns in his patent, however, as if it is an invention which already exists. Stephen Cullen's 1907 Games of the North American Indians identifies pop guns, hollow sticks with ramrods used to fire wads of chewed wood or bark from seven different tribes, as well as cataloging two pop guns excavated from Peru, although he suggests the evidence is not sufficient to establish proof of its existence before the time of European contact. Complicating a determination of when the pop gun as we know it came to be is the fact that the term pop gun seems to predate the toy. The Oxford English Dictionary traces the first use of the word to 1631. In 1794, several men were arrested in the pop gun plot, but the weapon was an air gun, a weapon developed in the 16th century that used air to fire a bullet and were used to hunt game like deer and wild boar, and even used in warfare. Hardly a toy. The word was used to mean something like pea shooter, although whether that refers specifically to a toy is less clear. What is clear is that the toy existed at least prior to 1868 and possibly long before that. Water guns, or squirt guns, also seem to predate the Civil War. When Abraham Lincoln called for 75,000 volunteers in 1861, William Tecumseh Sherman said that the number was inadequate. Why, you might as well attempt to put out the flames of a burning building with a squirt gun. The Chicago Tribune, around the same time, wrote, Let there be no boys play, no battles with squirt guns, and buttered words. What these guns might have looked like is left clear. The first patent for a proper water gun was filed in 1896 by John Wolfe. He called the cast iron liquid pistol a new and useful improvement in water guns and used a trigger to compress a hidden water bulb which would squirt water from the barrel. The firm Parker, Stearns, and Sutton would slightly alter and sell the liquid pistol, emblazoned with the words USA liquid pistol on one side and patented June 30th, 1896 on the other. Russell Parker, one of the firm's owners, would also patent improvements to the gun. Perhaps surprisingly, it wasn't marketed as a toy, but as a weapon of self-defense, meant to look like a derringer and stop the most vicious dog or man without permanent injury. And in the patent, Parker suggests filling the weapon with ammonia to keep foes at bay. At the beginning of the 20th century, toy guns were commonplace. Popular mechanics even included instructions to build one at home in a 1912 issue. Daisy continued to sell popular toys, such as the 1903 number 3 1,000 shot rifle, which sold 36,000 units in its first year, and the Model 25, a pump gun that was introduced in 1914 and eventually sold 8 million toys when it was discontinued in 1979. Daisy's first water gun, the Model 40 Defender, was a huge success on its introduction in 1914. In the 1930s, the Daisy Company came out with multiple tie-in toys, which sold well and drove the toy gun market for several decades. 
They tied to toys to popular characters in the 30s, like cowboy stars Buzz Barton and Buck Jones and science fiction ray guns tied to Buck Rogers. The popularity of Daisy's Buck Rogers gun was so great that in 1934 it caused a price war between Macy's and Gimbel's department stores. At one point, Gimbel's was reportedly selling the toy two for 19 cents, which was below even manufacturing cost. Other companies making toy guns in the 30s included Mark's Toys, National Firework Company, J.E. Stevens Company, and Kilgore. The 30s also saw a pushback against toy guns, most famously by a Chicagoan, Rose Durso de Simone, who organized a bonfire of several thousand toy guns in December of 1934. She claimed getting rid of toy guns removed an incentive to crime and reduced fatal accidents. She hardly slowed the popularity of the toys, however, which saw a golden age following the Second World War. The war had its own impact on toys as well. Paris toys made wind generators before the war, but made thousands of wooden dummy training rifles for the army during the war. Afterwards, they pivoted to toys, especially toy guns, including full-size replicas of the Model 1903 Springfield pop guns and cork-shooting Civil War replicas. Daisy, unable to use metal during the war years, turned to making wooden pop gun toys. And in 1944, E.W. Boyce and company advertised, The gun you've heard so much about, supposedly made using actual U.S. Army walnut gun stocks for the M1 carbine. Even Denmark-based Lego Company produced a toy gun, the 1945 wooden and later plastic peace pistol. The guns came with a note that reminded owners to remember the law of arms, never aim at a comrade, in jest or earnest. 1940 to 1960 is generally considered by collectors the golden era of cap guns. The 1950s in television saw an enormous number of toy guns appear on the market with tie-ins to popular Western, spy, and science fiction shows. Toys named after Roy Rogers, Gene Autry, Wild Bill Hickok, Hopalong Cassidy, the Rifleman, and the Lone Ranger proliferated. The 1950s also saw the large-scale introduction of toy guns made out of plastic. Mattel saw success with the Dick Tracy tie-in rapid-fire Tommy gun and in advertising their burp gun toy on the Mickey Mouse Club. The Multiple Plastic Corporation, or MPC, released a toy version of James Bond's attaché case from, from Russia with love. More wild toy sets were soon released, including a Bond attaché case that had a firing mortar and a rocket pistol. A tie-in for the man from Uncle had a toy pistol that could be turned into a rifle. The peak of this kind of toy might have been the Topper Toys Johnny Seven One Man Army, which could be turned into seven different toy weapons. The best-selling boys' toy of 1964. While cap guns' popularity declined in the 60s and 70s, space-themed guns connected to shows or movies like Star Wars and Star Trek took over. In the 60s, the rapid-fire tracer gun, a plastic gun which fired small, penny-sized discs, were manufactured, including in 1966 a Star Trek-branded version. Versions with a motor and foam disc were also released. Star Trek also saw the release of the first laser tag gun, when the Star Trek electronic phaser guns were released in 1979. The concept had first been tested by the U.S. military, which developed the multiple integrated laser engagement system in the late 70s for training purposes. George Carter III designed an arena-based scoring system for the game, which became the first Photon, the first commercial laser tag arena, in 1984. The 80s saw the introduction of two more iconic toy guns. Lonnie Johnson, a NASA engineer, first conceived of the idea for a better water gun in 1982, but it wasn't until 1989 that he was able to sell the idea to toy company Laramie. It appeared in 1990 as the Power Drencher, and in 1991 became wildly popular under the name Super Soaker. But the king of the modern toy gun world, of course, is Nerf, which is a broad line of guns that fire foam balls, darts, and water beads. Nerf's success started in 1969 with the introduction of the Nerf Ball by Ryan Geyer, the same man who invented the game Twister. The first Nerf Blaster was the Blastaball ball in 1989, which fired Nerf balls, and the first dark gun appeared in 1992 with the Sharpshooter. Toy guns, however, have always had a dangerous side. In 1951, a parolee was shot after robbing a store with a toy gun and brandishing it at police. New York City banned black, blue, and silver toy guns in 1955. Numerous other robberies were committed with realistic toy guns, and criminals carrying them were shot by police. Six were shot, according to the New York Times. A study by the Bureau of Justice Statistics revealed that investigators estimated that 15% of all robberies are committed using imitation guns. More disturbing, however, were children killed by police, like the April 1987 killing of a 19-year-old boy by police who while playing laser tag in California. In December, a 16-year-old was killed playing with a realistic-looking pellet gun. Realistic water guns like Entrench brand deepened the controversy. 
In August of 1987, a man interrupted a live newscast on KNBC-TV in Los Angeles, brandishing a toy weapon. The man forced a reporter to read a statement about space creatures and the CIA. Soon, toy guns were banned or regulated in 14 states. The first federal law regarding toy guns was tacked onto the Federal Energy Management Improvement Act of 1988, which enacted regulations about what toy guns had to look like. The statute required guns to have a blaze orange plug, be made in bright colors, or be completely transparent. There were, however, exceptions, and BB guns, pellet guns, and paintball guns were not considered look-alike firearms. Cases of toy weapons, mistaken for real ones, continued throughout the 90s and to the present day, especially if the toys have been modified to look more realistic. But it has drastically impacted what modern toy guns look like. And while the types of toy guns have certainly changed with time, one thing hasn't changed. Children love to play with them. A Nerf spokesman told Forbes magazine that Nerf sold more than 40 million Nerf blasters in 2020. And there are now more than 5 billion Nerf darts in the world. Most of those lost behind the couch. And some of the early versions of toy guns are now collector's items. And of course, even if we got rid of all the toy guns today, there is still the stick. It seems like we will have toy guns as long as we have children to play with them. I hope you enjoyed watching this episode of The History Guy. And if you did, please feel free to like and subscribe and share The History Guy with your friends. And if you also believe that history deserves to be remembered, then you can support The History Guy as a member on YouTube, a supporter on our community and locals, or as a patron on Patreon. You can also check out our great merchandise shop, book a special message from The History Guy on Cameo. 